In this episode of the Business of E-Commerce, I talk with Anatoly Spector about his journey from zero to $200,000 a year selling on Amazon. This is the Business of E-Commerce, episode 151. Welcome to the Business of E-Commerce, the show that helps e-commerce retailers start, launch, and grow the e-commerce business. I'm your host, Charles Plesky, and I'm here today with Anatoly Spector. Anatoly is a serial entrepreneur, a six-figure Amazon seller, an IT consultant, and the host of the 10 Million Journey podcast, where he shares his experiences scaling his Amazon business from 200K to $10 million a year. In this episode, Anatoly gets really into some numbers on his business, which I think is super helpful. He dives into when he started, how much it cost, some initial product runs, how much he's making today, and where he's hoping to go and how he's hoping to get there. He's super transparent, which I think is very helpful when you're listening and taking advice, because a lot of it is contextual. If someone is giving you advice, you kind of need to know, is this advice for a new seller or someone doing a million a year? He kind of gives exactly what advice he would do at what step and what he has done. And I think it's super helpful. So let's get into the show and follow along right to the end where he gives some really helpful tips to both new sellers and also folks scaling their Amazon business. So, hey, Antoli, how are you doing today? Amazing. How are you? Doing good. Awesome to have you on the show. Um, your journey is super interesting. Um, I've been doing some research about it and just kind of looking at um, talking about some of the numbers. So as far as an Amazon seller and we we're talking before the show and just kind of getting into some of those numbers, I think it's going to be super interesting to kind of go into. So real quick, you're an Amazon seller, right? That's kind of, that's your main focus. I, I mean, I like to call myself online entrepreneur and Amazon is the way I make sales these days, but uh, yeah, uh, most of my revenue comes from Amazon okay. these days. And you're currently, in, you kind of, so you have a podcast and you talk kind of publicly about the numbers where you're at, right? So that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I created a podcast to sort of uh, document my journey, how I scaled my business to $10 million. And I'm still in the process right now in the beginning about 200,000 and I'm moving to a million. We have strategy for that and then I'm moving to 10 million. So document everything and pick up brains of entrepreneurs who are several steps ahead or some of them multi-million dollars, hundred million dollars businesses. And I just talk to them and pick up their brains to help me out. And the last, my last question is always, what can you give me as an advice? I'm right here, it's how much you're making, it's what I'm doing, tell me. <laughs> and then they give me advice. So pretty lucky, yeah, I'm a pretty that, lucky person. <laughs> that's a very nice, uh, yeah, it's a dual purpose podcast and you're helping other people, but also getting advice. Um, so I love that. Exactly. You're at, so yeah. you're at 200,000 a year right now and most yeah. of it, like 90 plus percent is Amazon product sales, right? Yeah, yeah, we do have a Shopify store, but it's like minimal because we, we focus just on Amazon these days. How long did it take you to get there so far? Uh, so it was hit or miss. So first product we launched, we lost about $10,000 and then uh, we recouped a little bit because the product wasn't that good. So we launched a product when, and we thought this is amazing. When was that? How long ago? Uh, it was about three years ago. Three years ago. So we started about three years ago. We went for the one of the online courses to get us started with my wife. She's my business partner. And then we sort of thought, okay, let's launch the green binoculars because it's like, oh, it melts all the criteria. There's lots of green binoculars. My idea was, wow, well, people like green, green color. Green binoculars? Like literally the color green? Green, bino green binoculars for kids. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. the keyword was green binoculars for kids. And we're like, people like green binoculars for some reason. So we should launch those. But at that point, I was just starting out with the business right yep. you had a question oh, yeah. how did you where did you come up with the thought green but like why not red binoculars so. yeah yeah so essentially you go for like keyword research and you see what people look on amazon and at that point i don't remember exactly what we're doing we're doing it differently now but at that point we found the kids binoculars for the keyword people are searching for if you put kids binoculars on amazon i don't know if now it's still true but three years ago there was a whole bunch of green binoculars with uh, sort of with these blue things on the side like ribbons and we're like that's a good product everybody sells it and they're making money we should launch the same thing and my brain didn't work that way that i need to differentiate or be different or offer something more i don't know why i guess when you start out you make those mistakes and then we ordered a bunch of them and they did not sell well and it took us a year about to just sell them at cost and we 
sort of yeah lost a bunch of money but uh we i guess it's ten thousand dollars but i learned a lot so i think it's worth it instead of going to a business school i just did something for a year and i had so much knowledge that allowed me for next product not to make this mistake and start earning money yeah there's a lot so, of courses you pay for in college where you pay quite a lot and you know if you actually kind of yeah. do out the math right you pay for it and then you're like i don't even remember anything about that <laughs> So you start looking at like, 100%. you know, spending that kind of money, you're like, actually, it wasn't like the worst. I mean, consider yeah. other, yeah, it's not as bad as you make it, people make it out to yeah. be. But okay. I think it's one of the best things I did, to be honest, like looking back, I tried, I learned how to create corporations, how to deal with Amazon, et cetera, et cetera, how to sort of be a team. And yeah, I think the best 10,000 I invested so far. So well, I think a lot of people, because you said you took a, took a course and a lot of people, I think, do that and then they get stuck in taking courses and like they take a course yeah. but then they just take another course <laughs> and then like and they end up spending yeah. their ten thousand on courses and yeah you know you do one and then it's like all right now it's let's it's go time let's do this um 100 yeah yeah that that's the biggest problem but for us we just well went all in we paid about five thousand dollars for a course it was expensive course and it was the most money i would pay and i did not have a lot of sort of I, i'm not like a millionaire or someone i was just like it consultant six figure like salary but not like i could not just waste five thousand dollars and say yeah, i'll just buy for courses no i i we really invested in it in the course and we moved for it uh it, i guess it was a really good course but it did not sort of work in our way because if you choose some product that works and if you think you need to, always when you sort of get a course you need to think with your head like okay this is for many people but you need to adjust your situation and then think uh more than that so i mean they don't teach you in a course but essentially you need to think how they differentiate, how I be different, how what value I can bring, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, instead of just doing like blind keyword research, but at that point I was like, data, data means power. I'll just find the data, I'll figure out the way, and will work. But now I know. <laughs> so, so after losing that thousand dollars, I know. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, so yeah. actually, first on the course, there's a few things to unpack here. Would you? You hear a lot of people fall on both sides of this one. Is that something you'd recommend? Was the 5,000 price point too much? Um, like, how do you, looking back, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I actually feel that it was a good investment, 100%. So uh, what we learned, we were able to recoup with the next product pretty easily. So I recommend you go all in. So if you don't have money for the course, but you want to launch a product and you, you're short in cash, because I had some savings. If you don't have it, don't buy a course. Go to YouTube, check out. You can find all this information on YouTube. I'm the kind of person that needs guidance especially in the start like i'm okay finding pro and stuff like that but setting up corporations and legal things and setting up amazon and seeing how shipping works i need somebody like i need the structure so for me course was really good but uh, for many people i know and people i interview on my podcast who mo most of them didn't take courses they still make millions of dollars so it doesn't have to be a course but if you like me likes to be handheld i would buy a course so, oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are like 100% against it or then 100% for it. So, it's good to hear. Yeah, I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle, yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. probably actually an accurate place to be, right? That it's good for some people, not not perfect for everyone, but good for some. So, yeah. take the course, you decide to do some keyword research. When well, you said that, right, for your green binoculars, how did you actually, were you just literally searching around Amazon or was there like a process to that as well? At that point, yeah, they have an algorithm. I don't remember how they teach it, but I can tell you how I do it now because okay. I think everything is, is getting old. So whenever I tell you how I did that, yep. nobody could use it anyway because Amazon changes all the time. So if you want, I can tell you how I search for keywords these days. Yeah, cause cause I think it's fine because I tried might, to launch, enjoy I was trying to launch a new Facebook ad campaign right before this, and I'm like, what the? Like, it's different compared to, <laughs> it like, changes, compared yeah. to like two months Everything's ago. I'm different. like, this is really different. Okay, I got to figure this out again. So, yeah. yeah. So... Let's have a keyword research, I guess, if you were doing yes. it today, if you were starting off. Yeah, so these days, I'm just going to say uh, I'm not guru or like a millionaire or professional. So what I'm saying is it works for me. And it works like I launched about three products and two of them are making $100,000 for me. And one of them, we have defected items. So we cannot sell it, but it was selling about 30 a day without any reviews just because we found the right keywords. So this is as much as I can tell, like my expertise. Though I'm not a guru by any means, so listen, everything is an asterisk. I like, so, no, that's, that's uh, the right way to do it. Yeah, yeah. So um, 
there's a tool I use, and there are many tools. There's a tool like called Jungle Scout to get keyword research on Amazon. I use the one called Helium 10. I'm not their affiliate. I just use the tool. So the tool allows you to uh, take your competitor listings and find out what they rank for. So, And also, it allows you just to search for products. So, But I don't search for products anymore. What I do search, I search for keywords. This tool allows you to put some criteria. I want these products to be, I don't know, maybe from 20 to 100 dollars uh it sells i don't know maybe a couple thousand a month let's say or a day whatever you want you put some criteria and i do put some criteria and then it spits out me some keywords okay this keyword there's a lot of products that meets the criteria and then i look for every keyword and i try to see on the amazon page if there are enough products that have demand so not only like first two but like on the down of the page so something is selling there that selling well. And then if I see that's the case, I'm trying to think, how can I be different? Often there are keywords that people don't target, but those keywords bring money. For example, uh, hypothetical example, if I would be searching for binoculars, so somebody would look for um, orange binoculars for girls. And then if I type this, I would see there's search demand, but not too many people offer that. So this is amazing. Nobody does it. And that's how I found some of my products. Nobody would offer exact this thing. So I would go and I would build whatever people need and I would give it to them. And there's enough demand for it. And the tool Helium Tell will tell you how many searches there are. Or if you are on Amazon, you can do brand registry, literature your brand, and Amazon will give you this data too. So you can use both. So I try to use both. Brand registry on Amazon and Helium 10. It will just show me the demand. So I'll find a keyword that are sort of that have opportunities in them already. So people are searching for something, but nothing satisfies this. Let's say um, aluminum, I don't know, al aluminum clock. Everybody's looking for wooden, like when you type aluminum clock, it will be like wooden clock or steel clock, but not aluminum clock. I will build an aluminum clock, I will give it to people. That's a weird example, I know how <laughs> people buy aluminum clocks, but uh, sort of like you can go with material, with color, with shape, anything. So you would, if you go to those tools, you'll see that people search for something, but not some people, like some, some keywords does not have enough sort of supply, but there's a demand. So that's what I try to find and just bring it. And that, uh, to me, that works the best because I know what people like. Today's episode is sponsored by Drip. Drip is the world's first e-commerce CRM and a tool that I personally use for email marketing and automation. Now, if you're running an e-commerce store, you need to give Drip a try, and here's why. Drip offers one-click integrations for both Shopify and Magento. There's robust segmentation, personalization, and revenue dashboards to give you an overview of how your automation emails are performing. One of my favorite features of Drip is the Visual Workflow Builder. It gives you a super easy way to build out your automation world visually and see the entire process. It lets you get started quickly, but also build very complex automation rules. It's powerful, but also easy to learn, unlike a lot of email tools that offer the same type of automation. To get a demo of Drip today, you can go head over to drip.com slash BOE. That's drip.com slash BOE. Now, onto the show. So I've been around for a while with SEO and things like that, and going back to like Google, and maybe 10 years ago on Google, that was what you did, right? You kind of just looked for what are people searching for and what pages are not created yet. It turned out now, so, you know, five, 10 years later, everyone's figured that out, right? So everyone basically wrote all those pages, but I think e-commerce is still in a place where that's not done yet. So there's not the, you know, aluminum clock for 12 year old girls, like in someone searching for that thing and like somehow that's not created yet. If that was a blog article, right? Like how to do whatever, everyone yeah. wrote that already. Like somehow- it's creating. Yeah. yeah you creating did. content is much faster. Creating, creating content, content is, is much creating. faster yes. and it's much cheaper, I guess. Yeah. So that's, that's why. But uh, if this one does not work for somebody, there's another tip. And this is one from my guests. So this is not mine, but I use it right now because uh, one guest told me Amazon is about 12 months behind some other platforms. So some other platforms might already have something trending while Amazon is still picking up because people on Amazon like to sell what sells on Amazon. So they don't look outside of Amazon. So if you just do and look outside of Amazon to places like Etsy or like eBay and see what's trending there, you can find something that is not yet on Amazon, launch it and see if there's demand again. And if there's not too much competition, launch it on Amazon and then you'll get those sales on Amazon. And then if you're sort of a first or second, you'll get enough reviews to, to stay there. So this may be another good option. Yeah, I think one thing I've seen a lot of folks do very, very well is just not going down Google Trends and 
sometimes the trend is more on the news topic, but you can extrapolate from that search term, what will people want to actually buy, right? So there's pandemic and then, you know, it's 2020 here. So you say, oh, hand sanitizer or, you know, whatever that happens to be. So you kind of, if people are searching for COVID, then you start jumping into what products they may be buying when they're staying at home and just using that as your, you know, thought process. And like you said, you're going to get there. You know, if people are searching for pandemic today, they're going to be buying hand sanitizer tomorrow. So I think that's an excellent kind of tip to just get ahead of where people's uh, minds are at. And always the other one would be, if, if you want, the third one would yeah. be to look for complementary things. Like if, uh, so let's say binoculars, uh, Amazon shows you what this is bought with. So it can be bought with uh, West, Explorers West. I remember yep. people buying it with Explorers West. So launch something to complement a good product or bundle them together. But bundling is not the best because you sort of drive the price down. So ideally you would find some good opportunities that people like buy this item with something else and then you get to the original item but for like a back door you first make your supplemental thing popular and then when you build a brand on it you can build, you can launch a main thing and you'll have attraction Got it. so that will be another way i would say there are many ways but those also be some can come to my mind i want to circle back to what you said at the beginning so you launched your um green binoculars right green binoculars. and you said yeah. it was undifferentiated yeah. um go yeah. into that on what you mean by that and why you wouldn't do that again. So essentially my mind was, and I think it was definitely the wrong question. Everybody's selling green binoculars and there are demand for it. So I will launch green binoculars, but I would sort of, I did a little bit of differentiation. So I added a little bit magnifying glass, a little magnifying glass, <laughs> and just, then just I enough. changed. Yeah, exactly. That was my point. Like, why should I bother? Like my suppliers send this, sell this magnifying glass. And then I would make that really nice um, cover for it, like uh, like a box where I put it all. Uh, and that was it. But I did not do a research. People buy magnifying glass with them or not. I did not do like any research of that. So and uh, green binoculars, like to rank them, well, somebody needs to choose yours against somebody who has green binocular with hundreds of reviews. So why would it's a very good question. If you are planning to sell anything, just Photoshop your product into Amazon or any market, anywhere. Photoshop next to your competitors and ask yourself, why would somebody buy this? And then what I sometimes do, I just take those products and just put them in line without any reviews, anything. And then I show to people and say, would you buy this? And if people say yes to mine, I would launch it. If no, no, because if you cannot persuade people to buy uh, this one without seeing any reviews or anything or prices, then when you launch something and you don't, your price might be not ideal because they have bigger quantities and uh, you sort of, I don't know, your product might not be as superior as theirs or something like that, um, then people will not buy yours. They will just not buy yours. They need to buy yours if, you're, if yours is just better for some reason. Uh, it might be targeted to a different group. So if you're showing this to a different group and you're up to a different group, it's fine, different audiences, but just the same thing is not working. <laughs> I had, um, Doing the same thing is not working. I had a guest in here from PicFu a while back. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Yeah, okay. I use that tool. Yeah. I use that tool. Actually, that's really good. They're pretty expensive for new sellers, I will be honest. But yeah, it's amazing. You can put, uh, you can split test your things. You can put yours against your competition, give it to girls who like g green binoculars, and, they, they, uh, yeah, and then like, they'll choose one. I always think yeah. of it, I was talking to the founders, and it's, it reminds me of the, um, you know, you see on TV, like the people behind the glass, and you're looking and seeing, like, what do you think of this one? What do you think? Of, it's basically that, except the online version. So you can, what do you think of my green binoculars versus theirs or whatever? And you can, like you said, get an audience of girls that are into, but no, I don't know, like some girls are into like outdoor stuff um, and put this in front of them and they can tell you what picture they like. And it's without price, without title and that right there. So instead of having to learn on Amazon, you get to learn ahead of time. Like, does this even make any sense? So I always thought that was a cool, a cool yeah, idea. It's, it's an amazing tool. Yeah. I, I highly recommend it. I first, but for this tool, this is like a last step when before you need to make sure that even your friends or somebody who knows you don't tell them your product, just put them on Photoshop and make sure they choice. choose this. Yep. Before you pay, uh, it's pretty expensive. It's an amazing tool. It's just, just pretty expensive to do it if you sort of iterate many, many times. Mm -hmm. So find find something that works and then choose test on PicFu. They'll give you feedback, then update it, and then try it on PicFu again. 
But starting with PicFu might not be the best way because you will lose lots of money without getting much of insights because, well, if you if your friends are not choosing yours. So I don't know if, if, if random people. <laughs> yep. But it needs to be the same audience. You need to show it to people who you're selling. Like if you're selling, I don't know, baby clothes, show it to moms instead of to just your, your buddy John who doesn't have children <laughs> yep. and likes to drink beer and that's all he does. <laughs> that might not work. You're not, he, not the best audience on that one. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So you started doing that. You put it on Amazon. You spent 10000 right, on the first order of green binoculars. Is this from – were you private labeling or, like, how exactly yeah, are you getting these? Uh, so we – first we spent about 1000 or $2,000, I remember, and then we ordered them from China. They – took existing ones, they put our label in, they put like, yeah, yeah they private label and they, w- they would ship about, I think, 200 units or something like that. And then uh, they would not sell, would run some ads. And at some point, they start selling about like five a day or maybe six a day. I think our competitor went out of stock or something happened for a couple of days. And we're so happy. We're like, well, we'll run out of stock soon. We're selling so well. And then we order a thousand more, <laughs> uh, maybe a week of sales or something like that. I don't know. So it was sort of trending a little bit. And we're like, yes. We're going to be rich. We need to be order more. So then we invested more money and then it stopped selling. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so essentially that's, but they, we sold them in, in a year. So the next uh, Q4 in uh, December, they did sell, but much cheaper. We probably made about, I don't know, six, seven thousand dollars back. Okay. So it wasn't that bad, but we spent lots of time. And we by that time, we already had a second product because we realized what we did wrong. We're like, okay, binoculars are fine. We're not going to sell them. And then we uh, we looked at supplements. We're like, okay, um, we s- how would we differentiate? So we took uh, two different supplements. So people would buy this and that, to- and then we would uh, put them together in one capsule. So people don't need to have to buy two bottles. They would buy just a single bottle and it would have enough for, for like for both of them and they would always buy two together and nobody at that point come and when we launched it was amazing so we would start selling well as unfortunately at some point amazon suspended the product Ooh, really? okay. uh, because they like yeah we amazon likes to suspend you like they have bots and then they look for stuff and they suspend you and then you need to sort of prove that you're innocent so they say we had some claims that are not true which in supplements is a very important thing we did hire lawyers and we looked at all of this there was no claims we removed everything but like dealing with them took us about six months to get us back yeah and unfortunately uh... when we were back there was lots of other people selling this because people see wow this is an opportunity and we were not able to come back because the timing also is very important so we just uh we sold it but not not really good um, and then at some point we just dropped the product and we had at that point another supplement that we're selling much better uh, about 10 to 15 um, a day with about uh, we're selling it for about 34 I think or 30 dollars and we're making about 15 dollars of profit so it was really good product so uh, I guess after the ad spend maybe it's like ten dollars but still like a lot of like a really good margin like 30 40 percent margin so it was a good product and uh, yeah we we still sell this product and we made variation of that product and we have two products each of each making about hundred thousand um, dollars a year and then we launched the third one but it got defected so so yeah, the fact the fr- so the first one the supplement it's always interesting because with Amazon you're guilty until proven innocent um, they can just come down and random winner and that's why a lot of these marketplaces that's the double side of it right where yes you get a lot of orders you have an audience in it right there but if they decide you're wrong you're wrong and you have to now prove that you're not wrong so that's but did did you sell out of those you said those are done or. Uh, yeah, so we were able to get us back okay. uh, because we didn't. Nothing was wrong with our product. Nothing was wrong with our listing. It's just they pick something up, and then we were like this ballsy. We're like, we'll prove them wrong instead of just removing description and saying, okay, you're right, blah blah blah, which we did in the end. We're like, okay, why don't we just remove the description? Tell them that we did remove. We removed them. They put us back, and then we put the description back, and they never touched us again. So our thing was correct. They just, I don't know. Uh, their support is sometimes also weird. They, I don't know, they, they, they give you to one person to another. They don't look at your case that much. It was just like a mess, I guess. Uh, but yeah, we did sell those out. So this product was profitable. The second product was profitable, but too much competition at that point. And uh, yeah, just, I don't know. We didn't want to, and it was selling that good because I, I was always, right now, thinking about it, I'll probably 
keep that product. But at that point, I was like, I'm looking for this big product that will make me a million dollars. And now I'm more in the camp of have 10 products that can make you in total million dollars because if one gets suspended, at least you have nine more. So... So, yeah. that's, so, so actually, first, making me think, I interviewed a long time back, uh, e-commerce Chris, and he's, he used to work in that Amazon department that does those suspensions, and now he works with Amazon sellers to help them during that suspension process. So that was a good show. I'll link to that just because it's very, uh, if this is happening to someone else, it's actually kind of useful to watch and just see the inside process there. But so now you're going back and saying, instead of having your you know one blockbuster, you're just looking at finding your product that makes, you know, 100, 200,000 a year and just doing that 10 times basically. And is that yeah, kind of the path? Yeah, that, to, that, so the path is to 10 million. That's kind of, is that the, yeah, yeah. that's the name of the so podcast, the, the, journey yeah. 10, the 10 million journey, right? Yeah, 10 million journey. Yeah, so it's called 10 million journey because I'm scaling it to 10 million. Yeah, so the idea is for a first million, uh, it's actually tactical. There's nothing like, ooh, special about it. It's like you, you find the product that they're selling about, I don't know, 20, 30 a day, and then uh, they need to cost you about 20, 25 to 30 bucks, something like that. And then if you find, I don't know, five, six of them, you're making a million dollars. I, I don't have a calculator with me. I'm not really good at math, but uh, this is this is exactly that. So you, you sort of iterate until you find those products. It might be variations of a product, but product in total should do like about 20 to 30 sales a day. And then uh, this is how I get to first million dollars. When I do though, then 10 million is a little bit harder because, well, Theoretically, we'll, we'll you can do you, it yeah, again. We'll you here, won't get you there. Is usually kind of yeah, yeah. Once you do that, but, uh, once you want to add the zero. Yeah, but then talking to a lot of people who are at 10 million mark in my podcast, they all sort of they hint to me that this is not that easy. You cannot just replicate it. So you'll need to probably need to go wider, maybe go different countries, probably go um, retail or something like that. So find opportunities where you can establish relationships and uh, this way sort of grow it to 10 million. And then just have a brand, I guess, having a strong brand. So just focus more on a brand. And I think brands are what, what cost 10 million, not like like uh, shops of small shops. This is like corner store shop that has lots of different things. Uh, this is not like your mil $10 million. Your $10 million is like, I don't know, Starbucks. I mean, Starbucks is much more, but just, just like example, like a brand. Brand is like, has loyalty while just stores, they do not. So building this loyalty and proving that this is what people should choose is I think, a path to ten million dollars. Yeah, I like um, the I like that kind of approach. I'm taking little baby steps, and you know, okay, we get let's find one that sells this many per day. Great. Okay, I can do that. That means I can do it most likely a second time, right? Like if I can do it once, let's just do it again, and that gets you to a million. And that's probably going to buy you also some breathing room, right? On okay, now I can go into this full time. The bills are paid. Maybe now, okay, we need we need to order a much bigger run, much bigger production. We need a marketing, but we do all these budgets, right? That you just can't have, like when you're worried about like a $10,000 buy, you can't, you know, you can't invest in marketing or anything like that. You're not there yet, but kind of scaling up to a million. Now you're going to have enough profit to kind of throw off that. Okay. Maybe we can reinvest this and we can spend a year and figure it out. Right. And you can make that mis You can make a mistake again, but you can make a mistake at a whole different level versus the level, you know, before you yeah. worry about a $10,000 mistake, now it could be a $100,000 mistake. Yes, yes, exactly that. And uh, it's very tactical, as I'm saying, like, what I learned, and this is I didn't, I'm not there. So but I speak to I don't know, hundreds of people who are there. And they all have the same story. It's tactical, you find a way how to launch one, as you said, and you launch more, you scale from there. The scaling ends again at about a million dollars, maybe three million dollars. Usually, the scaling ends there because you need something more. Amazon is not the only vehicle who would get you there, and uh, from there, just yeah, figure out the other steps. But very, very tactical. Yeah, I think you always have like retail arbitrage, for example, and everyone's like, you can do yeah. it. It works, and like, yes, it works. It definitely works. But everyone I've talked to, hit you know, in person and on the podcast, okay, it's, hit a plateau. It's yeah. a plateau, right? Like, you can only do it. And um, one of the guests I interviewed, he's like, all I was doing is basically going to stores, filling up his trunk, sending it to Amazon, and then waking the next day and just doing it again. And he just hit the sit and like, he was just the maximum of how much stuff he could fit in his trunk, like of his yeah. car. Like he yeah, was literally, yeah. that is his plateau. Yeah. And then you need yeah, to start building yeah. what you're talking about. 
Yeah, and the other thing that is very important, I think, for uh, for me that I focus on is building systems. So I really want to make sure that it's replicatable. So I did hire a couple of people part time uh, as like a contractor who work with me and work on certain parts of the business. Because if I work on everything, I won't be able to get there. So I really document everything I do. I go for first product, like we're redoing this because I want to get in a different niche. Supplement is very competitive and it's hard to find more products. So I found a niche where I can find more products and I'm just going for first product again. I'm uh, recording everything on the video, everything I do. And then in parallel, my virtual assistant goes and uh, does the same thing with the second product. And then when I want to make sure it's a system and if it's all documented, this is the way how we're going to scale this to a million faster because there will be system. And it's also something that if I'm going to sell the business, it won't be me who need to stay there and support them. It will be a bunch of like standard operating procedures that people will uh, have and they'll just give it to any team because I want to make sure the way I do it is simple. So they will give it to any team member. They will do the same and they'll be able to grow it more and more. So I think that's another aspect that's very important that not too many people these days for some reason at my level at least speak about. Yeah, so, I think yeah. it's a system. It's the businesses, the businesses that everyone wants to buy are the ones with the systems, but the business you also don't want to sell is the one with the systems, right? Because then it kind of just runs itself. So and that's the beauty of it, right? If you build a business that you don't want to sell, that's a business everyone wants to buy. And I think that's process where it's not, where you basically aren't just buying yourself a high-end job. You're, you're there to actually build the processes or build the business that builds the processes even, you know, even one step above that. When you were just saying about niches, right? If you were talking to someone today and you're doing the podcast on like, hey, I'm sitting there right now, I'm listening. Maybe they just took the course, so they don't, you know, maybe they don't want to take the course or they can't. Um, what yeah, niches yeah, yeah. should they be looking at? What niches would you recommend? Or even how, what would you even recommend as a thought process to find those niches? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I have nothing against supplements, but there are some issues for me personally. First of all, I tried launching some of the supplements and people there, I would still, I would get like, Lots of negative reviews coming from some Chinese cells that are fake and they would like put my account in trouble. So this niche is like supplements. They do have those issues. You find something great and it's very easy for people to replicate this product because they will go and there are like hundreds of them will appear right away. You don't need to have, I don't know, any molds or anything. You don't even don't even need to ship it from somewhere. You just, you can do it anywhere and it's getting crazy. And you're, so and you're, like this, you said, you're combining two things, right? If you combined... Um, uh, blockchain amino acids and glutamine, right? Like everyone else can just buy blockchain amino acids, glutamine, put them together, and now they have yeah. essentially your product, right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So in supplements, the only way I guess to get there is maybe to find the crazy formula patented or hide it somehow so people like yours or have a really, really strong brand that does it first. So it's not as easy. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying people should not do supplements. I interview lots of people who do supplements and doing very well. For me, I, I'm always thinking it's harder. Like I'm trying to find an easier path. And I was doing supplements for a while and I found that there's so many issues with claims, with like competition, with everything. So I was like, something, it should not be that hard. Because I'm stressed out and I should not be stressed out. This business is a pretty simple model that many, many people do. You might think it's crazy, but it's pretty simple. So that's why there are courses for it. That's why many people who are not as smart as me even, uh, they, and I'm not the smartest person in the room for sure, but they are even not as smart as me and they still do that. So I understand that there's a simpler way. So simpler way is to go to niches that are not as competitive and there are, they, they don't have those issues. For example, if you go to... Uh, let's say kitchen, and then you find some kitchen tools. Well, they can be lightweight, they can be easy, etc., 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 and then you can differentiate there as well. With supplements, it's very hard to differentiate. Your only differentiator might be quantity or strength or maybe packaging. But again, easy to replicate. But if you have like custom mold and create something cool, uh, it might be better. Also, some supplements you can't even advertise in many platforms. So there are lots of issues with supplements that, that, that are innately hard. And then if you have supplement that cures something, you cannot say about, tell about it because this is like a claim and stuff like that. So all those small things, they are irritating, at least to me. So I'm, uh, I'm looking at something like that is easy, that doesn't have many parts, that is not electronics, that is not hazardous, something simple. Why not, um, why not electronics? What would be the... Uh, 
the liability, I guess, like, first of all, if you put it in like a socket, it might burn or something like that. And uh, I don't know, it just, and then electronics is also prone to returns, as far as I know. So a lot of people say, oh, I don't like this or whatever. They return more. Same supplement. People do return supplements. I'm getting lots of sort of returns. It didn't work for me. I'm like, okay, it's a supplement. It's not like a magic pill. Like, I don't know. Uh, so... So yeah, things like that. The batteries also, Amazon, I think that's not like batteries, it's like hazardous and stuff like that. So you need to either sell them separately or something like that. I haven't dealt with batteries, so I don't know. But batteries is not a good idea as well. Something sharp, I would not recommend. Something fragile, something very heavy. So I'm looking for something in the middle. Uh, that being said, if you find something heavy and it has really good margins, it's fine. Or if you find something uh, something that has batteries in, don't sell it with batteries. It's also fine. So I'm not saying people should not do that, but there are easier ways, easier ways to find something, I don't know, like this ball, for example. That's a good example. It's small, it's lightweight, uh, it's easier design. So you, yeah, your manufacturer will be able to build it because very often, uh, problem with manufacturers, they will sort of, if it's too hard, they'll make errors and then it will cost you the business. Even with like supplements, we did like the whole run and the whole run was wrong and now I have issues and negative reviews and like it's crazy. So it's it's very important to do testing and stuff like that, but also important to pick something easier uh, that might not be like as, uh, not make as much money as other stuff. But if you combine them, like even you create a brand, brand around this niche, I think you will you'll do good and go specific. I think the more specific the audience you can get, uh, that is pretty wide. I guess it still needs to be specific, but not like two people. Like if you if you go into I don't know something very very. I love aluminium aluminium clock people. Maybe there's nobody who likes aluminium clock. What is like ghost hunting? I never knew it's a thing, but lots of people are into ghost hunting, and this niche like makes millions of dollars for people. Uh, so stuff like that. So find a niche and then find how you can serve it, and I think it works well. Last question before I let you run, because this is always interesting on, and I think what order you do this, when you were talking earlier about keyword research about, or finding the niche, would you go in yeah. first on just going into a Jungle Scout or Helium 10 and just kind of throwing in keywords, or would you first come up with, okay, I want to be in the ghost hunting niche. Now let me find keywords that perform well for ghost hunters. Like what direction would you head in? I actually do both. Like I can like I Which have- one would you do which which one would I do first? Um, ideally, I would look at niche. niche. So I think I think I think I look at niche and I would list uh, things related to that niche. So I would be like, okay, ghost hunting. What do people like when they ghost hunt? This 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 and that. Then I will check it on Amazon. And then usually when I do check it, there are other keywords popping out. Then like, oh, maybe that niche is good. And then I would I would sort of do a research. But uh, whenever I find one product that is good. I always try to find at least like four other ones that I could potentially sell to make sure and if whether there's like audience for this particular sort of style and stuff like that. So uh, I, I will start with, with a niche itself, um, but then I'll go to keywords and I find good keywords for other niches. I would then go for keywords. So it sort of goes up and down. Um, yeah. Okay, I like that. Sense. Yeah, and, and like we are saying before, you could first even start backing up even further, right? Do your research on, um, you know, Etsy or wherever else, eBay, Google Trends. Start seeing what, okay, pandemics are big right now. Okay, what are some what are some niches inside pandemics, right? Okay, like ha like um, sanitizing, right? Okay, what are some things inside sanitizing? Okay, now you drill down hand sanitizer, obviously easy one, but yeah. maybe some other thing. Just, right? just a disclaimer before people start jumping on uh, on the sanitizers and oh, masks. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't do that yes. because Amazon is punishing everyone who is trying to sell any of those essential things because I guess there was a lot of like price gouging and stuff like that. I don't know. I wasn't part of it, but I heard <laughs> I heard a lot of bad things happen to people who were, uh, were so selling don't, those. Don't so, take that recommendation. <laughs> don't do that yeah, one. Yeah. But there are other things, like if you think about pandemic, people stay at home more. Yes. So there's home office things you can sell or I don't know, people are with their families now. What, what do families do together? Maybe they play games and there's a lot of things uh, above that, the necessity things that, that you can sell. So. I think that's the thing, right? Everyone, the big ones are going to start, everyone's going to go first. That's the bloodbath, right? On the hand sanitizer. But if you start going yeah. a little down on, oh, board games or, you know, comfortable bathrobes to wear at home, like you start just going down, you'd probably still do okay, right? And like you said, on the supplements, maybe that's the bloodbath and that's where, you know, that was, that's where the $10 million seller is going to be. But on the folks selling like the comfortable bathrobes, maybe that one's where you can just make the nice, 
you know, you're nice several thousand hundred a year and you get your orders and, and no one's really rushing into the bathroom niche right now and saying like, there's a pandemic, exactly. let's go all in on bathrooms. <laughs> so like, exactly. Yeah. maybe in your model, that is the way to go, right? On just looking at those, not the first tier, you're not competing with Purell, but you're competing with, you know, everyone else that's staying at home and that sort of thought process. I like. Yeah. Yeah, 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 hundred um, percent. There's a lot of niches that appear from this, so I yep. uh, highly recommend people look at that. You're totally right. Just be like, look at what trending in terms of not like products. Like, don't go for fidget spinners or stuff like that because they will go up and down. Yes. But find the niches that becomes new that never existed before. Remote working is something that people have not done before a lot. I mean, I was doing it as a consultant, IT consultant for a long time. Many people don't. So now maybe you need like microphone, which you didn't have before, yep. or like headphones or something in a cushion for your butt to be comfortable while, <laughs> while you're doing your work. A lot of those things that, that people can think of and definitely uh, consider. Awesome. I think it's a good place to end it right there. If folks want to kind of find you, follow along with their journey, where should they do that? Uh, well, you can go to 10millionjourney.com. This is my, uh, this is the website that puts you all the links to all the places where the podcast is and uh, Instagram at 10 million journey. You can ask me questions. If you like something on my podcast, ask me questions, follow, and then I'll be happy to talk. I talk to everyone there. Awesome. Thanks a lot for coming on. Great chatting. Thank you for having me. Yeah, exciting. I really liked it. Thank you very much.